knowledge of Islam is precious like gold because keys to success this knowledge does hold the knowledge of Islam is precious like gold because keys to success this knowledge does hold Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'ad fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habiballah As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiyallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurallah Our beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has stated Anyone who recites durood upon me once, Allah Azza wa Jal sends ten mercies upon him. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers of Madani channel, once our beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was amongst the Sahaba and Huzur sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam told them that, O oh my companions, I have seen hell and I have seen that women in the hell have outnumbered the men. Sahaba Kiram Ali Muridwan asked, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what is the reason that women are more in number in hell than the men? Huzur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, because they curse each other and because they are ungrateful. Sahaba Kiram Ali Muridwan again asked the beloved Master Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam that Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are they ungrateful to Almighty Allah? Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam replied that they are ungrateful to their husbands. If their husbands serve them for whole life but still, if they see any sort of shortage, they will start complaining and would say that since I came in your home, I never saw any goodness from you. The viewers of Madri channel, our beloved Master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us two very important things. Those things which because of our negligence can lead us to Jahannam. What are those two things? Number one, cursing others. And then it is habit of many women and especially those who are mother that when their children get naughty and they start doing something wrong, so the very first thing which they utter from their mouths is they curse them. It is not allowed. It is stated that if anyone curses something or someone and that person or that thing, if does not deserve curse, then that curse returns to the person who uttered it. May Almighty Allah will save us from this bad habit. Then, especially those Islamic sisters who are watching this silsila, they also be careful in their behavior and attitude towards their husband. Because being ungrateful to your husbands can put you into the fire of hell. Dear viewers of Madri channel, According to some pious predecessors, if you have a bounty of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, but you are not paying thanks, you are not showing your gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is possible that your that very nemat and bounty will be turned into a source of torment. Hazrat Imam Hassan Basri Rahmatullahi Ta'ala says, that Allah Azza wa Jal grants benefits of his bounty to the people as long he wishes. But once they get ungrateful towards Allah Azza wa Jal, then Allah Azza wa Jal turns that very bounty into torment for them. And it is happening. For many people, wealth is bounty of Allah Azza wa Jal. But once they get ungrateful and they show their ingratitude to the court of Allah Azza wa Jal, then that very wealth becomes source of destruction for them. Their children destroy themselves because of that excessive wealth. They themselves end up getting involved in crimes, in gambling, in 
drinking alcohol and many other evils. So dear viewers of Madri channel, it means that if we have bounty of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, then it is also compulsory for us to pay thanks to Allah Azza wa Jal on that bounty. Then, shukr is such a beautiful and accepted worship in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal that because of just paying shukr to Allah Azza wa Jal, sometimes a person is forgiven. There is a hadith in Mubaraka which says that when Allah Azza wa Jal grants any of his bounties to his bondsmen, and from the core of his heart, he believes that this bounty is from Allah Azza wa Jal. Then Allah Azza wa Jal writes in his book of deeds that this person is paying thanks to me. Then further, our beloved Master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that when a person commits a sin and afterwards he gets ashamed of that sin, so Allah Azza wa Jal forgives him just because of his being ashamed of his sin, although he does not ask for forgiveness. Meaning, before you utter the words for forgiveness, Allah Azza wa Jal forgives you just because of that state of your heart in which you feel ashamed of yourself. Then, our beloved Master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that when a person buys a new dress and pays its price, and then pays thanks to Allah Azza wa Jal. So Allah Azza wa Jal forgives him just because of paying thanks to Allah Azza wa Jal before that dress reaches his knees. The viewers of Madhi channel, from this beautiful Adhisham Varka, we come to know that if we are buying anything new, so that time we must pay thanks to Allah Azza wa Jal. If any bounty of Allah Azza wa Jal comes to you, it is compulsory for us to turn our hearts towards the court of Allah Azza wa Jal and show our gratitude to our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear viewers of Madri channel, our today's topic is again shukr and we already have done one episode on this topic. So let's continue our questions and let's go to the court of Mufti Sahib and ask him. Mufti Sahib, in our society, as we have discussed already, that the habit of paying shukr to Allah Azza wa Jal or showing gratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this habit is, you know, decreasing day by day. So my question is, how can we create awareness in, in the people so that they make the, their habit to pay shukr to Allah Azza wa Jal? Bismillah rahman rahim Promoting gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal and paying gratitude to the people, both. So... Our this silsila is one way to promote that. So basically there are two kinds of gratitude. Paying gratitude to Allah Azawajal and paying gratitude to the people. And both have been commanded. So for paying the gratitude to Allah Azawajal, the first thing is that if we follow the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the sense that if we make our habit to recite those supplications which have been narrated in Hadith after receiving any bounty, after eating, after uh, drinking and after uh, wearing any dress. So if we adopt those supplications, so that would be one kind of paying gratitude to Allah Azawajal, the first thing. The second thing is this that as I have mentioned, if daily in morning in evening we may our habit to pay gratitude to Allah Azawajal in our own words because supplications are in Arabic, sometimes we understand, some people don't understand. But in our own language, if we pay gratitude to Allah Azawajal, so that would be a very beautiful way for paying gratitude. Because when we are uttering some words in our own language, so we, we are understanding the meanings of those. At that time, really, the paying of that gratitude would be from the depth of our heart. And other than that, in, in which way we can promote this habit among the people, so I think the first thing is to become a role model for other people. If in front of other people we pay gratitude on every blessing and every favor of Allah. As for example, if uh, we drink water, if we eat anything and after that uh, in audible voice we recite Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So if we make this habit in front of people, 
with the intention of making the mind of other people so then it would be one kind of another virtue paying gratitude is one virtue but when we make intention to promote to teach other people how to pay gratitude after drinking and eating that would be other virtue and other than that if we uh, try to train our children to upbring our children according to islamic teachings and particularly we teach them and we train them that after drinking after eating after being dressed after receiving any bounty of allah azza wa jalla we will have to pay gratitude to allah so if we train our children in that way so inshallah in that way because children they are abroad in their houses so when in each and every house the the, the children are trained in that way so inshallah within a few years being gratitude of allah azza wa jalla would be spread among the people and the second thing being gratitude to other people because that is there is also lack of that thing in our society so for that purpose we will have to become a role model for other people as we pay gratitude to other people at every favor what we receive from that person and we try to train our children in that way for example if we say to our children that o oh children if you receive any bounty and blessing for any person if you receive any favor from any person so it would be your responsibility to to pay thanks to that person say him jazakallahu khaira or thank you so if we train our children so i think in that way paying gratitude of allah subhanahu and paying thanks to the people would be promoted in our society it's very wonderful ashimat sir you just said that i mean if you are drinking water or eating something so you say loudly alhamdulillah or you express your gratitude towards allah azza wa jalla so my question is that the same way i have observed many ulama and many mashayikh when they are sitting amongst their murids or followers so they do something so that other people can see so this thing will come into the category of showing off or this thing will become sort of training for others and in this way these people will not be considered as showing off people basically it depends upon the intention so if a person says loudly alhamdulillah rabbil alamin or he does anything in front of other people if his intention is to be considered as a pious person in the eyes of those people then it would be one kind of showing off it would be considered as showing off but if his intention is to teach other people because if a pious person if a leader or a sheikh or a teacher because he knows his disciples his students or his followers will follow him so just for teaching them and just for promoting that good deed among those disciple and students so now if he does something in front of those people with that intention so that would be another good intention and he will get reward on that as well and that has been proven from the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well there are many ahadith and there are many actions which the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam have has done in front of other people so that they can understand particularly for the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the matter is different because he was a prophet and it was his responsibility to teach the teachings of islam to people whether those teachings uh, were taught to the people from his sayings or from his actions but in the light of the practice of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we can say for the leaders and for the teachers and for the mashayikh that if they do any good deed in front of people to teach them that it should be done and that is the practice of their teacher that is the practice of their peer because some people they do good deeds but only they they do only those good deeds which are practiced and which are exercised by their teacher or by their disciple so if in with that intention a peer of a sheikh does something with the intention to promote that among his disciple so then he will get another reward and that would be the sunnah of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well subhanallah the viewers of madni channel from this question we got a wonderful madni pearl and that is that if a sheikh or a alim sahab is doing something amongst the public among other people who are sitting around him so we shouldn't have any sort of negative thoughts about him that he is showing off or he is you know doing riyakari so it is possible that his intention is to promote a good action or good deed or a virtue amongst the public or amongst the people or followers who are around him 
so if we are making badgumani then we must be very careful that that negative thought without any sharai reason valid sharai reason will be considered sin and we will be asked on the day of judgment about this sin as well making any kind of negative thought is not allowed but that is not special only for the pious people that is for every person for example if a common person does something in front of other people for example in in prayer a person is weeping or crying or he is offering prayer in front in front of people and he is observing khushu and khushu very beautifully so no one can make any any negative opinion regarding him though that person is an ordinary person he is an average person he is not a leader he is not a sheikh he is not a teacher so making negative opinion is not allowed whether that is regarding any sheikh and a teacher or that is regarding any common person yeah and that intention what we have mentioned regarding peer sahab and uh, a teacher teacher if they make good intention Ji. to promote to teach the people so that intention could be made by the common people as well for example as in the environment of the audi sunami every person is not a scholar every person is not sheikh sahab so those are common people but if they do something in front of other people so that the other people can learn something if they make that intention so that intention would be good but there is a difference between sheikh and teacher and trained sheikh who has got training from his sheikh so there is a difference between a common person and that sheikh because sheikh can maintain his intention he can recognize the faults which can occur in in his intention so he can remove that bad intention from his good intention and he can separate bad intention from his good intention but a common person because he is a he is not a scholar and he is not a trained person so then there might be mixing of good intention and bad intention a person starts good thing with good intention but during doing that thing the negative intention will come and that person wouldn't be able to separate good and bad uh, from each other so that's why as far as the ruling of sharia every person is allowed to do good deeds in front of other people i hope mufti sahab with your this beautiful you know detailed answer many people might be able to remove many misconceptions coming back to the topic uh, if someone mufti sahab does favor with someone now the person who is doing favor with someone so sometimes they expect some sort of return or at least they expect that other person will say me thanks or thank you so this kind of expectation is right or it is wrong the action of muslim must be only for the sake of allah azza wa jal whatever a muslim does he should make only intention for getting the pleasure of allah azza wa jal that should be the ultimate purpose of his every action whether that is a minor favor or that is any kind of other worship so he should make only that intention and sometimes if a person expects thanks and return from that person so it might waste the reward of his good deed that's why allah azza wa jalla mention those people who are really beloved in the court of allah allah azza wa jalla mention their qualities and their attributes what do they do allah azza wa jalla said wa yut'imun at'ama ala hubbihi miskinan wa yatiman wa asira انما نطعمكم لوجه الله لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا what do these people do whatever they feed to the uh, to the prisoner or the an orphan or the destitute person the first intention is ala hubbihi they feed to all these people only for the love with allah azza wa jalla because they have love in their heart with allah azza wa jalla that's why they are feeding these people so the first intention is to do something according to the demands of love with allah and then these people say to those dest- destitute and prisoners inna ma nut'imukum li wajhillah we are providing you food only for the sake of allah la nurid minkum jazaa'a wala shukura we don't want any return from you nor any thanks from you so we don't need any thanks and any return from you because we have done all these things for the sake of allah azza and they have said inna ma nut'imukum li wajhillah so now that person is giving favor 
these people who are feeding someone so they are giving favor to that person but they are saying we don't want any kind of thanks and any kind of return from you because we have done that job only for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. so that should be the intention of every Muslim there is another verse of the Holy Quran in which Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned regarding Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar Allah Ta'ala Anhu Allah Azza wa Jal has said Wasayu Jannabuhal Atqa the the most pious person, the most pious personality will be kept away from the hellfire. Allah di yuti malahu yatazakka, who gives his wealth in the path of Allah to increase in self purification. His purification will increase with giving that charity in the path of Allah. وَمَالِ أَحَادٍ عِنْدَهُ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ تُجْزَى And there is no favor of everyone upon him which has to be returned. There is no favor of everyone over him means over Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq رضي الله تعالى which has to be returned. So why does he spending his wealth in the path of Allah? Allah Azza wa Jalla is mentioning إِلَّا بِطِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِ الْأَعْلَى All his spending wealth is only for getting the pleasure of Allah the High. So that is his intention. And then Allah is mentioning, yarda, Because he is spending all the things for the sake of Allah Azawajal, so now that personality, means Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar Allah Ta'ala, he will be pleased with Allah Azawajal. He will be pleased with the reward of Allah Azawajal because he has spent that wealth for the sake of Allah. So in the light of these two ayah, the, the sunnah or the practice of Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar Allah Ta'ala to spend that wealth in the path of Allah but only for the sake of Allah and, there, and Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned there is no favor of anyone over him. This ayah was revealed when Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar Allah Ta'ala set free some slaves who were Muslim and they were being oppressed by, uh, by Kuffar. So Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar Allah Ta'ala set free them. So then someone said that might be there is favor of those people over Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar Allah Ta'ala and now he is being returned to them. That's why he is doing that. Then Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned no. What is his personality? He is the he is the most pious personality. Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar Allah Al Atqa. He is the most pious personality, and he will be kept away from the hellfire. And now Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned everything. He is spending his wealth in the path of Allah to increase in his self purification. So he is increasing his piety. He is increasing his purity of heart. And there is no favor of anyone over him which has to be returned. So now because he has spent everything in the path of Allah for the sake of Allah, so now he will be pleased with the reward of Almighty Allah. So that would be the, uh, that would be the intention of every Muslim. So as apparently it looks very difficult that a person uh, spends his wealth and he doesn't want or he doesn't demand anything from that person. But when a person has that kind of mentality and mindset to get the pleasure of Allah, then he can do that. Asimut sir, just during your, this answer, I mean, uh, you told us and the viewers of Madhuri channel as well that money is used for the purification of heart as well. But I have heard so far that when you are making zikrullah, reading Quran, reciting Quran and uh, you know uh, offering salah, so all these things purify your heart. But I think this is first time for the many viewers of Madhuri channel that they have come to know that even by money, using money they can clean their heart. So would you like to shed a bit more light on it? Uh, basically regarding heart, Ji. there are two commandments Ji. from Sharia from Allah Azawajal. One is called Tahliya and the another is called Takhliya. What is Takhliya? To remove bad qualities and bad things from the heart. That is Takhliya, to make something empty from something. So we have to make our heart empty from bad qualities, from love with this world, love with fame, love with name and uh, love with our desires we have to we have to purify our heart from the desires of, of our baser self that is called takhliya the another thing is tahliya tahliya mean to adorn something to adorn our heart to decorate our heart with the jewels of love with allah with the jewel of love with paradise and akhira and with trust in Allah, with patience, with gratitude. So these are good qualities which we have to develop in our heart. So these are two commandments what we have been given 
to do tahliya and to do tahliya so now what is the role of wealth in the matter of piety when we remove the love of wealth from our heart so it means we are removing some filth from our heart and that is that is tahliya that is purification of the heart now when we we recite the holy quran we remember allah azza wa jal we do uh, worships what we are very uh, commonly known to everyone so those would those would decorate our heart with those good qualities so in that way the role of wealth in the sense that we spend in the path of allah so that is very important in the purification of the heart subhanallah so it means that in this way one removes stinginess from his heart yeah if, if he's spending you know, stinginess is uh, is a is, is like a filth and we'll have to remove that from our heart so when we spend wealth in the path of allah azza wa jal so then we are removing that dirt and that filth from our heart and then it is getting pure subhanallah acha mufti sahab you were saying that uh, you know one should not have any sort of expectation from the one upon whom he is uh, you know doing his favor so don't you think it is very difficult especially the human nature when you give something you expect some sort of return from him as well so don't you think it's very difficult i think there are many situation in some situation it is it, it is not uh, difficult for example there are many people who give their wealth to their servants to their people to spend that wealth over poor people so they don't know who is getting benefit from that so they don't know that so now where is thank and where uh, and where is return from those poor people so and most of the people do in that way particularly uh, the rich people and the wealthy people so they give that well to any hospital to any madrasa to any jamia and they don't know who is receiving that and who is spending and where is, where are those people spending so in that way they are not wanting any reward in return only in those situations when a person is giving that wealth and that money to his acquaintances to his friends to his relatives that time there are some chances that this person will expect any kind of thank from that person so uh, though it might be difficult not to expect any thank from that person but it is not impossible why because in many situations these people have done that they haven't expected that thanks and return from any person so as they haven't expected from other people so they shouldn't expect from these people as well so in that way it is very easy the first the second thing is this if the intention of a person to to get the reward from allah azza wa jalla and he needs only the reward of akhira and he needs only the blessings and the bounties of paradise from allah azza wa jalla and his eye is only on the pleasure of allah azza wa jalla then it will be very easy for him because now that time he knows that the pleasure of allah and the blessings of allah and the blessings of paradise are much more better than these thanks and returns of this world for example if any person says to you that my brother if you give me 1000 rupees monthly if you give me 1000 rupees after one year i will give you one palace so though if in beginning he doesn't mention that he will return you in the form of a pa- in in a form of a palace in beginning you will say no i i can't give you 1000 rupees but when you come to know this person will give you one palace after one year after 12 month only it means you will pay only 12000 rupees and he will return you as a in a in the form of a palace so then we will say no my brother if there is any opportunity so i want to give you 2000 rupees monthly i need two two palaces so similarly those people who have the knowledge of sharia who have the knowledge of quran and hadith and who know the importance and 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 the greatness of paradise so they can spend that wealth without any uh, worldly intention very easily because their focus is upon the blessings of paradise on the pleasure of allah azza wa jalla and that is very easy as uh, there is one story regarding sayyidina siddiq akbar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and that was the cause of revelation of one eye of the holy quran uh, that is very famous story which has been written in the books of hadith as in bukhari sharif in the books of tafsir sayyida aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha 
Maadala, he was blamed by, by hypocrites people. And some Muslims who were really Muslims, they participated in that as well. In that blaming, they participated as well. Among those people, there was a, there was a person whose name was Mistah. Mistah radiallahu ta'ala was a Sahabi and he was a Muslim. He was a true Muslim. And he was a Badri Sahabi. I mean, he participated in the campaign of Badr. And he was the relative of Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar radiallahu ta'ala as well. But he was a very poor person. That's why Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar radiallahu ta'ala used to provide him with his sustenance. He used to give him Assist, uh, some, him. Uh, his uh, food and uh, money and this and that. Mm. He used to give him. Ji. But when and this Mistah radiallahu ta'ala was one of them who blamed Sayyidina Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala. When he did that, Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala and who swore that I will never spend money over this person after this, after this incident. Because I am spending money on that person and he is blaming my daughter. So Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala and who stopped to give him any more charity. When the matter was solved, then Allah Azza wa Jal revealed one ayah of the Holy Quran. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in that, وَلَا يَأْتَلِ أُلُوا الْفَضْرِ مِنْكُمْ وَسَّعَتِ أَنْ يُؤْتُوا أُلُوا الْقُرْبَى At the end of that ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned, أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Subhanallah. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned those people who are uh, well, excellent people who yeah. are excellent people yeah. and wealthy people yeah. so they they shouldn't swear that they will never spend their wealth in the path of Allah over destitute people and over their relatives they shouldn't do that and they shouldn't swear for that then Allah Azawajal mentioned Allah tuhibbuna an yaghfir Allah lakum don't you love and don't you like that Allah will forgive you when Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu listened to that ayah that Allah Azawajal is saying Allah tuhibbuna an yaghfir Allah lakum don't you love that Allah will forgive you Siddiqui Akbar radiallahu ta'ala said oh Allah I love that you will forgive me I love I need your forgiveness and I love that you forgive me so then Allah uh, then Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar radiallahu ta'ala again started spending his money and wealth over the same person who had blamed his daughter so I told this story to learn the height of the intention of those people who are really pious and he's not only pious he's the most pious person so what is the mentality and mindset of these people whose eyes are only over the pleasure of Allah, over the blessings of Allah, over the, over the forgiveness, forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. So when those kind of things are in your mind, so then you can spend in the path of Allah and you will never make any intention to get any return of that in this world or to get any thanks, to receive any thanks from the destitute people. So it, it needs that kind of mentality and mindset and, and mm. that depends upon getting knowledge. Really, if we get knowledge uh, regarding the importance of paradise and the greatness of paradise and the beauty of paradise and in the bounties and blessings and favors, what we will have to be given there. So if we really come to know regarding that, so then it would be very easy for us to spend in the path of Allah and, and we will never make any bad intention in that. And the viewers of Madri channel, very uh, thought-provoking story from Mufti Sahib. From Allah Azzawajal, Hazrat Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala was commanded to mend his ties even with that person who was trying to cut the ties with Hazrat Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And in one way or other, he harmed even the dignity or the personality of daughter of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu as well. So, uh, what should we learn from this? You know, it has become our habit that if we favor someone, we expect something from him as well. And at least what we expect from him is that whenever he sees us, he should come to us and, you know, shake hands with us and very humbly he should make salam to us and whenever he is passing by us so he must at least you know pass smile to us and in many other ways we want him to be under us in one way or other so it might be because of your that expectation that I have done some sort of favor with him so dear viewers of Madni channel try to purify your intentions 
and do whatever you want to do but only for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal and only and only for getting the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Acha Mufti sahab everything will be accepted because of the sincerity and ikhlas. And the meaning ikhlas is very difficult. Many people they are mashallah practicing Muslim but they don't find ikhlas in their hearts. So my question is that how one can discover that I am doing this particular action and I have ikhlas and sincerity in my heart as well. And then if there is any madani recipe to get ikhlas, please tell us. Uh, sincerity, uh, I would say in some ways it would be difficult to attain but in many ways it is very easy to do. How? Because if we make our mind properly and we train our mind in that way that we have to do everything only for the sake of Allah. So then within a few days we will make our mind and we will get that uh, sincerity Ji. and that kind of uh, mentality we can attain very easily. But if we leave our mind without any thought and without any particular intention, so then many things will come to our mind because shaitan is, uh, is behind us every time. So he will put his uh, whispers into our mind. So it depends upon our paying attention towards that. If we pay attention towards attaining sincerity, then it would be very easy. And for that purpose, I would say, first of all, we must learn the definition of sincerity, the definition of ikhlaq. What is the meaning of that? Then how many kinds are of sincerity? And in how many ways shaitan can put showing off in our deeds? So when we learn that knowledge, First of all, the knowledge is important. The second thing is, is that during doing good deeds, we will have to think about our intention. When we are doing something, that time we will have to think about our intention. What is our intention? When we are offering prayer, when we are offering tahajjud, or when we are offering nawafil, or when we are reciting the Holy Quran in front of other people. So that time we must think about our intention, what, what that is. So if we do muraqaba, over our intention that time, so that time this meditation and that thought will clear our mind and it will lead us towards sincerity. That is the second thing. The third thing is to do muhasba means self-assessment, self-analyzing. We will have to, when we have done something, after that we should pay attention over our intention, what was that during action? Because before doing that action, we made intention for only for the sake of Allah Azawajal. But because shaitan is behind us every time, even during the action, shaitan can divert us from sincerity towards showing off. So that's why after doing good deeds, after doing that good deeds, what we are doing, that time we should self-analyze us. We should analyze us ourselves and at each and every step of our worship, if that is uh, recitation of the Holy Quran. So we should think about the whole duration of our worship. What was our intention before doing that good deed, during the uh, during uh, that good deed and after doing that good deed. Because showing off is not only before doing that good deed. Showing off can occur to a person during that action as well and after that action as well. Before doing a good, a good deed, a person can make intention to be considered as pious person in the eyes of other, other person. And during, uh, for example, during offering prayer, the people are looking at, at him and he and now he is observing khushu and khuzu. He is bringing khushu khuzu in his prayer now. So during action, a person can be ostentatious. And after doing good deeds, now he can tell other people that I have done that, I have spent that uh, uh, too much wealth in the path of Allah, I, I have offered tahajjud prayer today. So showing off can be, can be done before uh, good deed, be before action, during action, after action. So now self-assessment is very necessary to, to keep us away from showing off. So I think these are three steps if we take before, first of all we learn knowledge. Second, during the action, we should focus upon our intention and after doing good deeds, we should, we should do self-assessment regarding our action. So, in, inshallah, uh, through these three steps, we would be able to attain sincerity easily. 
dear viewers of Madhi channel, what a beautiful Magni pearl from Mufti Saab. This is cure for us as well that if we have bad habit of you know making bad intentions, you know these intentions come automatically sometimes, involuntarily. But if we are caught up in this problem, then what a beautiful solution that before doing anything, just stop for a while and look inside yourself and then tell yourself that I am doing this thing only and only for sake of Allah Azza wa And during that action, that course of action, carry on checking yourself. If you, if you find any negative feeling, if you find any, you know, you find the traces of a negative uh, uh, intention, then try to remove them as well. And then after completing that action, then you must be careful again because this is the time when you are again very vulnerable, again very vulnerable in front of shaitan. Shaitan can come and make you show off in this way that you start telling others. For example, last night I was reading Tahajjud, so this is also one way of showing off. Or I helped so and so person, it is also showing off. That so, might be showing off. Gee. So as Mufti Sahib has told us, that it might be one way of showing off. So we must be very careful in this regard. I said, Mufti just now you were make, making mention of greatness of Akhira. So really Akhirat is great and uh, then the rewards which we uh, listen from scholars, from Quran and Hadith and then what we have heard about Jannah. So all these things are really very great. But still we are unable to find any you know, love in our hearts for Jannah, most of the people. And uh, love for the, the success in hereafter. So what is the reason? The main reason is the lack of knowledge and lack of paying attention towards that. If we really, if we come to know the blessings and the bounties of paradise and then we pay attention towards them, so then uh, I think after that doing good deeds and worshipping Allah Azawajal would be very easy and then we can attain pi uh, piety and sincerity and other good qualities very easily. And how can how can we get the knowledge regarding Akhira? So that is very easy. A few things are very common and very uh, familiar for every Muslim. If he compare between this world and the uh, and, and the hereafter, so he knows and he believes that this world is mortal and Akhira is immortal. This world is impermanent. Akhira is permanent, and this world is made of mud and dust and that world and the paradise is made of gold and silver and that has been adorned and decorated with jewels and gem, gems and uh, diamonds and the many other bounties of Allah what we can't even imagine that as Allah mentioned فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ No one can even know what the coldness of eyes Allah Azza wa Jalla has, Allah Azza wa Jalla has hidden for him. So the coldness of eyes is in paradise. So for, uh, for, for the first thing, for, the get, uh, for getting the knowledge uh, regarding paradise, I think the, the, best, the best book is the book of Allah Azza wa Jalla, the Holy Quran. Because in the Holy Quran, Allah Azza wa Jalla has mentioned the, the blessings and the graces of paradise I think in every para and in most of the surahs. So if we really recite the Holy Quran with consideration and we try to understand that, so inshallah at, after every uh, four or five pages, we will, we will read something regarding Akhirah, the blessings of Akhirah, how high are those and how exalted are those. So the, the, best, the best study for getting the knowledge regarding Akhirah is the study of the Holy Quran. Other than that, there are many books and there are many booklets uh, uh, about Akhira as well as there is uh, one speech of Nigrani Shura regarding that. In Urdu, I think, uh, Jannat Ki Bahare, the, the blessings of paradise. So that has been published by Maktabad al Madina. So reading that, uh, in the reading that booklet or that book would be very beneficial for that. And in the first part of Bahari Shariat, which is regarding beliefs of Muslims. So in that first part regarding uh, paradise, the blessings of paradise, Alhamdulillah, there is a very beautiful summary of the blessings of paradise. So if we read that first part, so inshallah in that way we can learn the, we can learn re knowledge regarding paradise. And now the matter of paying attention 
towards those blessings because sometimes we learn but after that we forget or we don't pay attention. So the way for that is to read that again and again and to uh, to uh, to contemplate upon that for a while daily or for uh, 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 once a week. So if we really if we pay attention towards the blessings of paradise even once a week, so inshallah then the the memory of those blessings would be alive in our mind and in that way inshallah our heart would be inclined towards the blessings of paradise. Subhanallah. Dear viewers of Madhuri channel, if you really want to create and instill love of Akhirah, then you must think about the bounties of Almighty Allah Zazal and especially the bounties which will be provided to us in Jannah. S imagine about the rivers of Jannah, rivers of honey, rivers of milk, rivers of sharab tuhur and then river of water as well. And then imagine about the inhabitants of Jannah, Hoors, then Ghilman, then your other fellow Muslims, Jannati companions, then imagine about the mansions which you will be given and granted by the favor of Almighty Allah And then imagine that you will be in the company of your and our beloved Master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Jannah. And all those personalities which we always long for being in their company, for example, Huzur Ghawse Paak Rabbi Allah Ta'ala, Khaja Muhyiddin Tishti Ajmeri Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, and then many other great scholars and awliyas and ulamas, inshallah azawajal, all of them will be there in Jannah. So Jannah is eternal bliss and peace, and Jannah is abode for the pious people. With these words, I make dua that may Almighty Allah Azzawajal give us death on Iman, and may Almighty Allah Azzawajal grant us special place in the special company of His beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Paradise. Ameen, Ameen, Bijahinna Bil Ameen. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The knowledge of Islam is precious like gold Because keys to success this knowledge does hold The knowledge of Islam is precious like gold Because keys to success this knowledge does hold